Hey everybody, welcome back, Devin, the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing, and the new administrative counters for Lock and Load Tactical are now available for sale on the company store, or at least they should be by the time this video is up, and if they're not, they should be within a day or so as soon as David can get around to pushing the button to make the counter sheet active. Now, what is this? Well... We needed to update the graphics on the admin counters for Lock and Load Tactical because most of the graphics we've been using are, <laughs> let's admit it, almost 20 years old. So we decided we were going to change out the graphics a little bit. And as you can see, we've got new fired markers. And if you flip it right over, oh, there's the new moved markers. And let's see what else have we got. What we've got in here, we've got events A, B, C, D for line of sight and a b c d for occupation we also went ahead and added in a couple extra event markers e and f beforehand uh scenario designers were limited by just the four and if they wanted to have more events well we didn't have the capability of doing that so we went ahead and made up a couple more event markers for future and for your design your own ops complete markers and we have the new spotted on the back and we've got immobilized and on the back of that or on the front of it is wounded you will notice we don't have a lot of the text for the wounded effects on there it got really busy with all that text on there and it was kind of hard to see that it was a wounded marker with all the text so we decided to get rid of the uh the extraneous uh, text on it so just a regular wounded marker uh assault move and assault fire we never had the assault fire markers before now some people would say it's like well why do you need the assault fire markers technically you just put a moved on it because uh, well yeah it's, it's you you fire first and then move and then so putting a move marker on it well but if you want to put the assault fire on there it's there i like using the assault fire marker just so i can see who assault who moved and then fired and could as compared to who fired and then moved uh new spotting rounds new low crawl continuous move abandon stealth and on the front side fire for effect shaken melee hit and run now we did if i can get this focused we did do the acquiring markers a little bit new now you'll now notice that it says target on the one that you're supposed to put on the target because i'll admit I, I used to get a little bit confused on which one was supposed to go on the tank and which one was supposed to go on the target well now we've got that all all figured out now so we've got acquiring and we've got v through z so you can just expand onto your existing uh counter counts without messing them up and then, of course, on the back, and i got to be careful. These things just want to pop right out. And minus two on the back. We've also got the new Fire 1. Let's see if I can. For some reason, this thing is just not one into autofocus. Uh, we got the Fire 1, and we got the Smoke 1 markers with the Fire 2 and Smoke 2 markers. And then now we're going to get into something a little bit bigger. Now we've got some weapon size, weapon size, weapon team size counters here. We, one thing that always was a bit of consternation for me, we never had victory and objective markers. So we went ahead and made up some victory markers for victory locations. You've got two different colored sides, gray and black, so you can choose whichever one you want. Objective markers, we really never had objective markers either, so you can use those also in addition with the victory if there's more than vic four victory markers. But if you notice on the back, we've also labeled them objective A, B, C, D. So for scenarios that have varying, uh, uh, yeah, varying victory points for different locations that you capture, it's like, all right, objective A is worth five points, objective B is worth seven, objective C, whatever. And only you know that, or one side knows that, they can put it down so the, and the other side has to try to figure out which ones are the most, most important uh, objective markers. Not many scenarios based on that use that, but from going from here on forward, we're figuring, hey, let's give the scenario designers the option if they want to do that. So those are all weapon team sizes. So when they're on the board, you can actually tell them apart when they're sitting underneath regular size counters. So you can actually tell at a glance which one are the victory points. And now for the vehicle size mount counters, we've got hull down counters and vehicle emplacement counters. Two different types of situations. Hold down can be done by vehicles moving during their turn, and vehicle emplacements are set up by scenario design or design your own at the beginning. And then on the back of those, 
we've got upper floor markers. And we've got two different colors. We've got brown upper floor markers and stone gray colored upper floor markers. So you can put it in if you're in a stone building or if in you're in a wood building. Again, we may decided to go with these larger size because there's too many times when the when the previous upper floor mark well, they weren't they weren't upper floor, they were upper levels. We decided to replace upper level with upper floor. It's the same exact counter. It does the exact same thing as it used to. It's just we felt that the word upper level didn't work so much as upper floor works a little bit better. But these are larger size. These are vehicle size because there's too many times I would run into a situation where I'd, I'd run up to an enemy, think in a building, you know, I disrupted them. I thought they were on the ground floor and I move in there and find out that they're actually on the second floor because I didn't notice the upper floor mark or the upper level marker. And they'd rally the next turn to drop a bunch of grenades on my head and kill me. So it's just an easy way for us to tell what's on the main floor, ground floor, and now what's on the upper floors. Uh, this admin sheet is, I think it's $4.99, $5, something like that. We are not going to be including these counters in any of the previous boxed editions of Lock and Load Tactical Modules that we have out there. We will, however, be using this new artwork and these new sizes in the modules that will be coming out in the future. So if you've got or if you order, like, say, Heroes of the Nom, you're not going to get the new the new counter artwork. And honestly, the mechanics of the the, the rules are all the same. We just changed the graphics and we just gave a, gave a little bit more variety for the victory and objective markers. So it's a good little sheet to have. If you, if you want to take a, take a look at the new admin markers and you want to start using them in your, in your previous games. But from here on out going forward, we will be using these new admin art styles. So like I said, go ahead, check out lock and load publishing app, the store page. I'll put the link in the comments below. And I think that's all I got. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And I'll see everybody later. See ya!